Finally, to complete our toolbox for finding power series representation of functions, we're going to look at the uh, power series representation for a particular class of function. These are the so-called binomial series. And namely, we are looking for power series representation for functions of the form 1 plus x to the r, where r is a real number. And we're going to uh, assume that r is not a positive integer because otherwise what we have is just a polynomial of degree r and then its Maclaurin series is finite. And writing out the Maclaurin series is simply writing out the polynomial in standard form. So that's not very interesting, so we're going to uh, throw out this case where r is a positive integer. So let's assume it's not, and um, then we're going to look for the Maclaurin series, and therefore we're going to look at the successive derivatives for this function. The derivative of order 0 is the function itself. When we differentiate the function, it's the rth power of a function of derivative 1, so we get just r times 1 plus x to the r minus 1 times the derivative of 1 plus x, is, which is just 1. So this is all we get. Then we differentiate again, the second derivative is going to be r r minus 1 times 1 plus x to the r minus 2, then r r minus 1 r minus 2, 1 plus x to the r minus 3, and so on. And so if we differentiate n times, we're going to get r r minus 1 r minus 2 all the way down to r minus n plus 1, so that if for instance n is 3 we get r minus 3 plus 1 r minus 2. And then it's multiplied by 1 plus x to the power r minus n because we've differentiated n times. And therefore, at least when n is greater or equal to 1, uh, the nth coefficient in the Maclaurin series is the value of this nth derivative at 0 divided by n factorial. That's by definition. And you see that if we plug x equals 0 in the formula above for the nth derivative of f, we get just 1 for 1 plus x to the r minus n because any power of 1 is 1. So we end up just with this uh, product of n terms uh, r r minus 1 r minus 2 all the way to r minus n plus 1 divided by uh, n factorial. And we're going to give a name to this quantity. Uh, we're going to have a, a special notation for that uh, and write it with rn in a column like this between parentheses. Um, in the case where r is a positive integer greater than n, greater or equal to n, uh, this would be the number of ways to pick a subset with n elements out of r elements, or in other words, the way to pick uh, n elements out of r. These are called also n combinations out of a set of r elements. Of course, here r is not a positive integer, uh, but we, we will still call these things uh, binomial coefficients or uh, combinations uh, as a slight abuse of language. Uh, here we need uh, to look at what, uh, what kind of values we get for that, at least uh, at the beginning, um, when n is 1, then uh, what we're looking at in this, if you look at the algebraic formula, at the bottom you just have one factorial, that's 1. At the top you're looking at um, simply r because uh, you just have one element. We have n elements in the product at the top, right? r and then r minus 1 and so on. But if we have just one element, it's just r. So we have r divided by 1, that's r. It's consistent with the uh, interpretation, combinatorial interpretation I just mentioned. The number of ways to pick one element out of R is, of course, R ways. Right? You have R choices to pick your one element. On the other end, if n is 2, then we have two elements in the product at the top, and that's going to be R and R minus 1, and n factorial becomes 2 factorial, which is 2. Now this is again consistent with the combinatorial interpretation I mentioned. The number of ways to pick two elements out of R, well for the first one you have R choice, for the second one you have R, R minus 1 choice remaining, therefore you have R, R minus 1 ways to pick your pair in an ordered way, 
but since you're looking at the number of ways to pick an unordered pair, right, you don't care about the order, then you pick it, picked it twice in two different orders, so you have to, div to divide by two. As a convention here, um, you see that the zero term, C0, in our Maclaurin series is equal to 1 because it is the value of the derivative of order 0 at 0, which is just 1. So to be consistent, it will be easier for us to take as a convention that uh, this binomial coefficient R0 is 1 by definition, and this is somewhat consistent with our uh, combinatorial interpretation because the number of ways to pick a subset with zero element out of a subset with R element, while you pick the empty set, there's only one way. So uh, in that sense, this is consistent. Now with these notations, the Maclaurin series for our function f is the series, the power series from zero to infinity of these binomial coefficient rn multiplied by x to the n. And now we can look at uh, what is the radius of convergence for this series, for instance, trying to use a ratio test. So if we take, if we call a n this uh, coefficient, binomial coefficient r n x to the n, then when we look at the um, absolute value of the quotient of two consecutive terms, uh, we get this uh, r n plus 1 coefficient r n plus 1 divided by the coefficient r n and we multiply by x to the n plus 1 over x to the n, in other words, just absolute value of x. And if we write out what that is, this is what we obtain, and you see that we can cancel out things in this uh, product uh, that is inside the absolute value. All the terms cancel out except for r minus n, and then we have this n factorial over n plus 1 factorial that cancels, uh, that simplifies as well to 1 over n plus 1. So at the end, we end up with absolute value of r minus n over n plus 1 multiplied by the absolute value of x. That means that the limit as n goes to infinity is simply absolute value of x because um, r is a constant and uh, n over n plus 1 goes to 1. So that means that by the ratio test, this power series is absolutely convergent for absolute value of x less than 1 and divergent for absolute value of x greater than 1. So the radius of convergence is 1. We're not going to worry too much about what happens uh, at the endpoints at negative 1 and 1. And we're just going to focus on what happens when absolute value of x is less than 1, strictly less than 1. Uh, what we have so far is that this series is convergent, and this is the Maclaurin series of the function 1 plus x to the r. We didn't prove that uh, it is convergent to 1 plus x to the r, but we're going to admit it because it would take a little bit of effort to uh, prove that. And so here um, we're going to use as one more standard power series representation uh, this uh, formula that 1 plus x to the r, where r is a real number, is a series from 0 to infinity of this binomial coefficient rn, which are defined um, as shown in the right rectangle uh, in the top half of the screen. This is the coefficient multiplied by x to the n, and that is valid for x strictly between negative 1 and 1. So let's look, for instance, at the case where r is 1 half. And then um, we get a power series representation for x strictly between negative 1 and 1 of 1 plus x to the 1 half, which is square root of 1 plus x. Then the first coefficient r0 is 1, and that's multiplied by x to the 0, which is 1, so that's the first term. Then the coefficient r1 is r, r is 1 half, and we multiply that by x to the 1, so we get x over 2. The next coefficient is going to be r, r minus 1 over 2 factorial, when r is 1 half, so we get 1 half times negative 1 half over 2, and that's negative 1 fourth over 2, negative 1 eighth, and that's multiplied by x squared. Then for the next coefficient, which is going to be multiplied by x cubed, we have r, r minus 1, r minus 2, 
in the case where r is 1 half, that gives us 1 half times negative 1 half times negative 3 half divided by 3 factorial. And we keep going that way. And so in this case, we get 1 plus x over 2 minus x squared over 8 plus x cubed over 16, and so on. And this is true for any x between negative 1 and 1. In particular, we can substitute other expressions for x. So for instance, we can get a power series representation for square root of 1 minus x squared. So I just replace x by negative x squared. And then when I, instead of 1 plus x over 2, I replace x by negative x squared, I get 1 minus x squared over 2. If I replace x by negative x squared in x squared, I get negative x squared squared, that's positive x to the fourth. So I get minus x to the fourth over 8. If I replace x by negative x squared in x cubed, I get negative x to the sixth. So I end up with negative x to the sixth over 16 and so on. And the condition, of course, would be that the absolute value of negative x squared is less than 1, which is the same condition as absolute value of x less than 1. Now another um, example to illustrate how we can use this binomial series. Uh, let's say I want to find a power series representation for the arcsine function. Well, there's not much we can do directly for arcsine, but if we look at the derivative of arcsine, uh, it's 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared, and I can write that as 1 minus x squared to the power of negative 1 half. And in other words, it's 1 plus something to the power something. In this case, we have uh, the power is negative 1 half, and we have 1 plus negative x squared, so we're going to replace x by negative x squared. Anyhow, as long as uh, the absolute value of negative x squared is less than 1, we can use the binomial formula for the uh, the binomial series, and we obtain the series from 0 to infinity of this binomial coefficient when r is negative 1 half multiplied by negative x squared to the n. Now negative x squared to the n is really negative 1 to the n times x squared to the n, which is x to the 2n. So we end up with negative 1 to the n, this binomial coefficient negative 1 half n, x to the 2n, for absolute value of negative x squared less than 1, which is the same condition as absolute value of x less than 1. And so arc sine can be obtained by integrating, integrating term by term this power series representation of its derivative. So up to a constant, we obtain the power series from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, this binomial coefficient neg negative 1 half n, and then an antiderivative of x to the 2n, which is x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, and we have the same radius of convergence. Now we need to find the constant, but that's easy to do because we know that arc sine of 0 is 0, and on the other end, if I plug 0 in the power series representation, I get c plus the value at 0 of the power series, which is 0 because all the terms have a non at the positive power of x in them, and therefore we get 0 for the value of the series at 0. In other words, the constant c has to be 0, and that means that we have a power series representation for arc sine x given by this formula. And we can look at the first few terms, for instance, when n is 0, negative 1 to the n is 1, then we have uh, negative 1 half 0 is just 1, because each time we have a coefficient r0, it is 1. Um, so we have coefficient 1 multiplied by x to the 1 over 1, so we get just x for the first term. Then when n is 1, the negative 1 to the n at, uh, in front is negative 1. Then negative 1 half 1 is negative 1 half. And then we have x cubed divided by 3, so we have this x cubed divided by 3 multiply by negative 1 half, multiply by negative 1, so we end up with x cubed over 6. When n is 2, negative 1 to the n is 1, and then negative 1 half 2 is really negative 1 half times negative 3 half divided by 2, so that is uh, 3 eighth. And then we have x to the fifth over, fifth over, over 5, so we have this 3 eighths multiplied by 1 fifth is 3 over 40, x to the fifth. And we can keep going that way. And the radius of convergence here is absolute value of x uh, less than 1. 
So we know that this uh, formula is going to be valid on that interval. There are many more examples we could go over, but um, the idea was just to illustrate how you could use this binomial series. So now it's time for you to turn to homework.